in the high country, which means three things. The leaves are changing, the weather's a little bit cooler here in Boone, North Carolina, and Appalachian State and ULM play here for homecoming. Hello everyone, Harrison Battle, Pierre Banks with you, and Pierre, a really fun matchup we have here today. The two remaining unbeatens in the Sun Belt Conference, and they just so happen to be in different divisions. Yeah, we'll get a look at two good football teams here today, HB, and it starts offensively. The Warhawks are led by their senior quarterback and Caleb Evans. The last time these two teams tangled, he went off over 400 yards of total offense, five tugs, but on the other side of the football, the Mountaineers not too shabby themselves. Zach Thomas has done a tremendous job of orchestrating this offense all season long. He's a game manager, and all he does is win, never losing a home start here at Kia Brewer Stadium. Welcome back to The Rock as you see a look at first-year head coach for the Mountaineers, Eli Drinkwitz, 5-0. and Not too shabby way to start your first campaign as he leads the 24th-ranked Mountaineers here on this field for the first time ever. All the history that this program's racked up over the years, but this crowd witnessing more of it today. On the other side, Matt Viator in his fourth season at the helm of the Warhawks, his 14th year overall, 95 and 58. He has a 17 and 25 record as the leader of ULM. Matt Viator doing a terrific job of building a culture of success at ULM, had his Warhawks on the brink of participating of in the inaugural Sunbelt Championship game a season ago, which the Mountaineers won. And this year, Eli Drinkwitz has just been tremendous. Already a win and an ACC opponent. Tough win on the road their last time out down at Louisiana, trying to keep it going today. Some drizzle here at the stadium, but the fans brought the ponchos and ULM had to walk down the slick path to get to the field, but they're ready to go. They wouldn't trade it for anything. The series history between these two, the fifth meeting all time, App leads it 3-1, the third time playing in Boone. The last time these teams met, App lost 52-45 in Monroe in 2017. The Mountaineers have just two losses going back to 2015 in Sunbelt play. One of those came against the Warhawks. It'll be ULM that is going to return here to begin. You better believe ULM is ready to play this football game. They've been in some tough environments already this year, not intimidated at all by this crowd today. Chandler staying with the boom. Marcus McCray back to return, and McCray will have the opportunity to do so. App State with a great special teams play there as the first one on the play was Nick Hampton. So, Pierre, for the first time, we will see the ULM offense led by senior quarterback Caleb Evans, 6'2", 210 from Mansfield, Texas, and he's had a great career against the black and gold. He was an honorable all-mentioned Sunbelt Conference as a sophomore. After his performance against the Black and Gold, his first career touchdown came against the Mountaineers, and he was the Offensive Player of the Week as well, and the performance that had five total touchdowns. A pass dropped here to begin as he tried to go to the outside, and now second and long here for ULM. Caleb Evans will be the key in this football game. The Warhawks need a big-time performance out of him and the Sun Belt's leading rusher in the backfield there is Josh Johnson has been tremendous all season long. Evans standing in the pocket. He's going to throw to the right, and he has a man available. And a great catch that time as he's able to connect with his tight end, Tyler Lamb. The coaching staff talking about during the week how Lamb's a very good player. He doesn't get all the attention he maybe deserves backing up Josh Peterson, the other tight end, who will call his name a lot in this game. But Lamb very reliable as well. Now they're going to go to the ground game as it's the Sun Belt's leading rusher, Josh Johnson. And he gets a few yards for being brought down by Noel Cook. Nice push right there by the offensive line of the Warhawks, getting just enough 
of this defensive front for Josh Johnson, who could do some special things once he gets into the open field. A little space there. So now second and four here for the Warhawks. Evans has some pressure. He's going to roll away from it. A flag is down. And he's just going to toss this out of bounds. So for the first time, we'll have the chance to hear from our referee on the day, Marshall Lewis. Demetrius Taylor with tremendous pressure off the right side there. Looked like he got held. It's going to be a matchup to watch all day. This front seven of the Mountaineers versus the offensive line. Number 77. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Demetrius Taylor has had himself a season, including a fumble cause, recovery of a sack against North Carolina for a touchdown and an interception in the same game. Just continues to wreak havoc on offense. An all-millennium performance. They're going to hand it off to Johnson. He has a seam, goes ahead, and Des Franklin's going to get to him across the 40-yard line, but that's a first down for the Warhawks. That's what Josh Johnson can do to you. He's patient to the hole. He lets the block develop, and then you see the burst through the hole and the physicality to finish at the end. Compact at 5'9", 215, and the Mountaineers have got to rally to the football to bring him down. Evans looking to his left, still looking that way, and it's over the head of his intended target as that time he was trying to connect with Perry Carter Jr., the wide receiver from Houston, Texas. Going back to that game that Evans had against the Mountaineers back in 2017, you're talking about 403 yards of offense, five touchdowns, 24 of 32 passing, and oh yeah, Pierre, he had a 50-yard touchdown pass with 23 seconds left in the game. Had a a tremendous game, having a great season, second in the Sun Belt right now in passing. It's gonna go to the outside, he has McCray, McCray with a big cap as he darts ahead and gets across the 25-yard line. So this is a very methodical ULM offense. Sometimes it takes them a little bit to get going, but here thus far in this one, everything seems to be working. And you love what you're seeing from this ULM offense. The offensive line doing a tremendous job of giving Evans time in the pocket where he can be accurate and letting his receivers down the field show off their athleticism. 118 career starts for that offensive line as this is tossed to the left and darting ahead and getting a few extra yards there on the play for the Warhawks is Kayan White and White getting more opportunity here today with one of the running backs for the Warhawks Isaiah Phillips out with an injury it's a tremendous play right there by Caleb Evans to avoid the rush initially and then when he sees the defender come off his receiver just shovel it ahead for a big play Evans has his man spinning around and being brought down by Josh Thomas. They see the speed of the Mountaineers on display defensively. Looks like there's a lot of green grass around the receiver, but Josh Thomas closes it very, very quickly. It's a young man here, all Sun Belt selection a season ago, having himself another good season. The rain starts to pick up a little bit here at the Rock. And the handoff's going to go up the middle. Josh Johnson gets a few extra yards after the initial contact, and he is such a physical running back. Has just done an incredible job this year for the Warhawks. This is a guy that was competing for the starting position coming into the year, and now he's sitting as the seventh best rusher in the country. This is close, but they're going to say that He's down just short of the goal line. Right now, you see a ULM team that is in rhythm. They've got this defense off balance, being able to run the ball with success. Have a lot of success through the air when you don't know what's coming against a team that's heavy in run, pass, option looks. They can really do some damage. As you see Josh Johnson here, the legs just continue to drive there. Not able to get into the end zone, but nice run. Evans tries to take it in himself. Did he get it? No. Elijah Dirasuba with the initial contact. And now it'll be third and goal and a crucial third and goal here for the Warhawks, although 
Don't be surprised if they don't get it here, if they go for it on fourth down. They've gone for it more than any other team in the Sun Belt this year on fourth down 16 times, and they've had some issues with the kicking game this season. It's a tremendous play by Dara Suba. Mountaineers came up big a week ago on the goal line. See what they can do here. And rushing into the end zone is Kay and White. So the Warhawks drive down the field on the Mountaineers and put points on the board first. And you hear that drop off of the crowd noise here at Kid Brewer. That is a great drive for head coach Matt Viator and the ULM Warhawks. And that's what he wants to see. This is a team that struggled on their initial drives throughout the season. Slow starts all across the board. Not here today in a hostile environment. That's a tremendous way to start for the Warhawks. The point after is good. And now it's a 7-0 lead here for ULM. So, Mountaineers 24th in the country. Get punched in the mouth a little bit here to begin. Physicality up front by the Warhawks. And then the finish on the ground. You see it there. Just tremendous power. And able to get it to the end zone. That's the way that you want to start. If you're Matt Viator, get your team in this type of environment. Get them some success early, which builds that confidence. We talked about it. This team has been in some situations this year where they've been in some hostile environments against some really good ball clubs. Already faced the top 25 team earlier this year in Memphis. Not afraid of the big stage. We talk about a tough schedule. They went to Tallahassee, played Florida State. The week after, they went to Ames and played Iowa State, and then had to take on the 23rd ranked team in the country in Memphis. It was at home, but still, nobody wants to play that sort of a schedule before you get the Sun Belt Conference play. The boom here as Evans is back to return, but he's just gonna let it go into the end zone. And a touchback from Jacob Meeks, who has gone back and forth between the kicker with Jared Porter, who's also the punter. Meeks is the kickoff specialist, though. And now the reigning Sunbelt Conference Offensive Player of the Week, Zach Thomas, leads the Mountaineer offense on the field. He's been tremendous all year long, very efficient in running this offense, always makes the right checks, makes the right reads, doesn't beat you as an offense, and that's what you want to see if you're Eli Drinkwitz. Sutton comes in motion. And Thomas cannot complete the first pass that he throws. This is a ULM defense that has numbers extremely skewed from that aforementioned schedule. So we're still not really sure exactly what this defense has to offer. It is a veteran group, though, 185 combined starts on the defensive side of the ball. They struggled against the run this year, giving up a lot of big plays. Today, they want to eliminate those. They don't want to make it easy on this offense. Already off to a good start. It's a fake both ways, the end around as well. And now he has a man, that's Henry Pearson that makes the catch at the 40 yard line and is dragged out of bounds. A beautiful pass that time from Thomas. The strength of this ULM defense is their speed, but right there you see Eli Drinkwitz take advantage of it with the misdirection, get the linebackers flowing in opposite directions and leaves an opening right behind him for his very talented sophomore tight end for a nice first down call. Sutton comes in motion again, but this will be a handoff to Darrington Evans. He has a rush ahead off the right side. And now Evans, with nobody in front of him, ties up the game. The reigning Sun Belt rushing champion all week long. He's heard about Josh Johnson, who is the current leader <laughs> in rushing in the conference. I talked to him earlier this week. And he was taking it personal. You saw the focus in his eyes, and you saw the speed and determination there on the way to the end zone. Big time run for the vicious Samu zone, Darrington Evans. And once he gets past that initial line, you can just forget about it. You're not going to catch him. World class sprinter speed came into this university as a track star, and you see the vision right offhand. And then the first to get through the hole, not even touched through the line. Darrington Evans, big time response for the Mountaineers, tied up at seven. Well, we knew coming into this one that we could possibly have a shootout with 
these two groups' offenses. And the Mountaineers with a fantastic start there offensively, responding to ULM. Three plays, 75 yards, 41 seconds off the clock, and a 59-yard rushing touchdown from Darrington Evans. Chandler Staten with the boom here. And he can't get this one in the end zone either, so ULM with a chance to return it, and a beautiful form tackle that time by Matthew McQuinn, the inside linebacker. Well, we talked about this ULM defense being susceptible to the big play. They gave up 59 yards and a touch there to Darrington Evans. As you see, the swarm of yellow jerseys, the kickoff coverage team, team right there by the Mountaineers. But as an offense, as a ULM on this side of the ball, you got to understand that this is a team game, and we have got to have our brothers back on the defense. You had a great start to it, moving the ball down the field methodically, putting it in the black, want to keep it going here. Toss to the left, and the pass cannot be connected with Josh Peterson. You're going to see him come out and have a lot of opportunities here today. He leads the team with 24 receptions, 288 yards, and five touchdowns. Fantastic athlete, and they want to find a way to get him the ball however they can across the middle on the arrow routes. Try to even do some screens to him. But when you have an athlete and matchup problem on your hands like Peterson, you take advantage. Josh Johnson with a rush this time. And the Mountaineers stop that at the line of scrimmage as Tommy Dawkins gets him from the ankles. And this is the position that Ted Roof and his defense wants to be in. Getting this ULM team in third and long situations where they're more predictable. They can't keep it on the ground or put it through the air. Take a look at Josh Johnson. Tremendous numbers this season. Leads the Sun Belt in rushing. This is where you don't want to be if you're ULM. I think bad just went to worse. Tough situation there for the Warhawks again. 118 career starts for this offensive line, one of the most experienced in the country. And this is also a ULM team that has done a great job with penalties this season. Currently, they sit second in the Sun Belt. The Mountaineers are ninth in the Sun Belt in penalties, so something to watch. Evans trying to find some space. He's going to try to do it with his legs, has the Mountaineers chasing him. It's a nice pickup right there by Caleb Evans, but when you get yourself in third and long, these nice pickups don't amount to much because you still face fourth downs. You see a nice job of baiting the rush and then turning on the wheels. The Mountaineer secondary burn the last time Evans seemed to look to take off with it when they came off of a receiver that time held off knowing that they were in a third and long situation. Now they face their first punt of the day. A close play that time as he was just a yard short at the end of it. And now it's Jared Porter that'll kick off are punted away here for ULM. The fair catch is made from Thomas Hennigan. Porter, a very good punter, 28th in the country with his 44-yard average. And where Hennigan caught that last ball is where the Mountaineer offense will take over. And the last time this ULM defense was on the field, they were off it just as quickly, but not in a good way, giving up another big play. It's what they want to avoid. If you're the Mountaineers, you got all the momentum right now with the Nice 59-yard run by Evans in the touchdown. You get your first three and out on the day. You try to keep that momentum rolling here. Malik Williams comes in motion this time. Thomas will toss it out to Darrington Evans, and he shows his catching ability as well as a nice game there on first down. Track star in high school, recruited here to Appalachian as a receiver. Started out in that receiving core, but due to injuries, he moved into the backfield and hadn't looked back since. You see the nice touch pass there by Zach Thomas. And a nice game. This time it's Evans that'll rush it off the right side. And ULM that time won't let him get too much further as Kilo Sweeney, the safety, gets to him. And the Mountaineers find themselves in a rhythm. You saw that with the ULM offense their first time out. 
But when you're able to run the ball successfully, go through the air, you keep that defense off balance. A few tosses here. Malik Williams back to Zach Thomas over the top. Stretched out. Colin Reed cannot make the catch. But a little bit of trickery from Aliyah Drinkwitz here as we're just underway in the first quarter. Going forward right away with the reverse pass here. Had a man open in his tight end, Colin Reed, but just good enough coverage right there by the safety to force an overthrow. That's a nice job by Tyler Glass. If Tyler Glass is nowhere around, then Zach Thomas doesn't have to put the ball on the money. He can throw it a little shorter, but that forces the overthrow. This is Marcus Williams Jr. that gets the handoff this time. A great job of getting it to the outside. And the Mountaineers had a tough loss a week ago, Pierre, with Dietrich Harrington going down, the backup running back. He'll be done for the year. But as we've talked about all season long, it's a next man up mentality in that running back room. And Marcus Williams Jr. will gladly take more carries. He's a guy that has seen success his entire time at Appalachian. Freshman year thrust onto the scene because of injury. Same sophomore year. He just continues it now. Thomas fakes, now throws. Malik Williams with the catch and his reliable wide receivers pushing the Mountaineers further and further up the field. And that's a product of having success on the ground and having an aggressive defense. When you show run, you take a look on the replay. You see the linebackers blitzing the line of scrimmage, and that leaves a void right behind him. Nice pass by Zach Thomas finding Malik Williams over the middle. Williams Jr. with the carry this time. He has some space off the left side. And he'll run out of bounds before his man could even get to him. Chasing him that time was Tyler Glass, the safety. But these Mountaineers getting some great rushing lanes. How about some love for the guys up front? Marcus Williams Jr. not even touched until he's out of bounds. That's a telltale sign your offensive line is doing the job. Back to the ground they go, and this time some resistance comes from the ULM Warhawks. As it looks like they're still trying to find their way. Mike Collins, the defensive coordinator in his fourth season. This is a defense that is very opportune in their turnovers, but does give up a lot of yards between the 20s. Williams Jr. brought down this time as a great tackle from Cortez Cisco Jr., a linebacker 5'11", 220 from South Haven, Mississippi. He is a tremendous ball player, leads this team in tackles, and the Warhawks need him right now on the goal line. Once you get inside the 20, that's where football is played, and if you can eliminate the big play and keep teams to three instead of six, you will be in ball games, but this offense is dangerous for the Mountaineers. One of the best in the country, this App State offense, when it comes to getting inside that 20-yard line. Thomas rolling out to his left. Now he's going to look to see if he can do it with his legs. No, he cannot. It's being pushed away by Kilo Sweeney. And going back to that stat, this App State offense. It's a tremendous job there by Zach Thomas, partner. Understanding he's got man coverage, everybody back is to him. So once he breaks that initial rush, gets out of the pocket, he can pick up that first down and keep the sticks moving. In 22 red zone trips this year, the Mountaineers have 20 touchdowns, one made field goal, and a missed field goal. That's a 90.9% completion when they get in this area. One of the best in the country as Darrington Evans spins away, but he cannot get any further yardage. This Front seven for the Warhawks, not the biggest in the country, but they are super fast and they are ultra aggressive. And when they can get penetration against you in that zone blocking scheme, they just shut down everything you're trying to do rushing the football. That's a nice job there defensively. Evans comes in motion. Thomas looking for a man in the back of the end zone. And Thomas Hennigan cannot get around his defender that time, as that is Josh Newton, a guy that hasn't had a ton of experience from that cornerback position. Transfer from wide receiver to cornerback during spring, but it's done a nice job this season. It's a nice job by Newton, getting his head around, getting his hands on the receiver, and stopping a nice fade attempt right there by the Mountaineers. Give him credit, Newton, for doing the job on the goal line. Give this defense credit Right now for holding the Mountaineers to this third and goal, trying to keep them out of the black. 
Thomas faces pressure in the end zone. He has a man low as that is Thomas Hennigan trying a different route and this time connects for six. But when we talk with this Warhawks coaching staff, we heard a lot about Thomas Hennigan. We have got to find him where he is on the field. If we can do that, we will be okay. Not able to do it that time on the goal line. The Mountaineers put up another six. So Chandler is staying out here for the point after. And now Appalachian has a 14-7 lead over the Warhawks back on top. You see Zach Thomas going through the progression. Nice toss in the back of the end zone. Finds his favorite target, Thomas Hennigan. Mountaineers upset. A look at Sean Clark, the Mountaineers offensive line coach there. And we heard throughout the week from this ULM staff about how great it was that the Mountaineers still had him in that position with how successful this offensive line has been. He's got to be extremely happy with his unit thus far. We talked about it. it's a ULM team that gives up over 200 yards per game on the ground already so far in the four, first quarter rather. Mountaineers with a buck 07 on the ground. This offensive line paving the way for these running backs. Chandler Staten with a bigger kick that time, so no opportunity for the return from Marcus McCray. And now ULM comes back out on offense. So they had one drive where they were extremely successful, got it going with the passing and the run game. The next drive just couldn't quite get that play that they needed to convert the first down as they were just a yard short. What happens here this drive, and what, if any, changes need to happen? Well, it was the miscues on the last time out, the missed pass to Josh Peterson really put him in a second and long situation. And then when you got third and, and maybe intermediate, you get a five yard false start penalty, which puts you at third and, and long. And even though you get a nice run from your quarterback on third down, not enough to pick up the first. If they can eliminate the miscues, put together some nice runs here, mix up the pass and, and put together a long sustaining drive, it would be to their benefit. Right now, they're really. The fake to Johnson, Evans rolling out to his right. He has Peterson, and Peterson is brought down by Akeem Davis Gaither. And it is such a weapon for the Mountaineers to have a guy like Akeem Davis Gaither from that outside linebacker position that can catch up to such an athletic tight end in Peterson. Josh Peterson with wheels because Akeem Davis Gaither pretty quick himself. Peterson just runs right past him, but Gaither with that closing speed brings him down. Going to Johnson here, he has a rush ahead and is still churning those legs as he's close to midfield. And Josh Johnson is such an impact player, fourth in the FBS with five runs of 40 plus yards to show you his explosiveness. The burst through the hole and then the power to run through tacklers and carry people with them to finish the play. That is the mark of a great running back. Folks at home, when you stop moving your feet, that's when you are tackled. Josh Johnson never stops moving his feet. That's why he leads the conference in rush. So Evans going to the outside here. He has Peterson and a modest gain that time. Peterson with a D in his last name, if that sounds familiar to, or to you. It's because, well, his dad is current Philadelphia Eagles head coach that won the Super Bowl back in 2017, Doug Peterson. A former ULM quarterback, although then they were North East, Northeast Louisiana, excuse me. So a great pedigree for him, and he's really come into his own here this season. The handoff goes to Johnson. The ball's loose. Josh Thomas has it. And Josh Thomas is ahead for the Mountaineers as he's off the left side. He'll be pushed out of bounds by Evans. And we'll go ahead and take a look back and see whether or not Johnson had a knee down, but I don't think he did. I think that's a Mountaineer turnover and a big play from both sides. Huge series of events there. Josh Thomas with a nice run. Runs through the initial tackles and you're really right. on the field. Down the there fumble recovered by the defense. First e. Scott and Josh Thomas, Johnny on the spot to pick it up and get the ball on inside the 25 yard line. Josh. Johnson is a terrific running back. He did have a fumble a week ago against Texas State, and right now 
a big time fumble when you've got all the momentum you're driving the football you've had some great positive plays and Josh Thomas there capitalizing on it for the Mountaineers this coaching staff talks about Thomas being one of the most intelligent players they've ever been around he's the quarterback on this field when it comes to this defense right there he takes advantage of a huge miscue by the Warhawks we knew that the turnover battle in this game was going to be absolutely humongous coming in. App State was plus five in turnover margin. ULM was plus three. That is first and second in the Sun Belt Conference. And the Mountaineers are the first one that get it. Turnovers were a huge point of emphasis for ULM. Last year, they were negative 12 on the season. This year, much more improved when you saw it on their record. But that's a big miscue there. Evans trying to find some room to move around, and he's going to gain a few, but that's a lot of ULM tacklers in the area. ULM forcing 11 turnovers so far on the years. Where they excel defensively, offensively, they've done a pretty good job of protecting it. But when you come into an environment like this, with the two division leaders taking on each other undefeated, the miscues are the difference. Mountaineers going back to the ground as Darrington Evans is off the right side and he'll run out of bounds before he takes the big hit that time. But another first down for the Mountaineers. And yet another run by a Mountaineer where the running back is not contacted until they are well out of bounds. It's offensive line right now working it against the front seven of the Warhawks. Back to the ground they go, Evans. Gets to about the two yard line, still pushing ahead. And now he's finally brought down. You see this Warhawk team, once the Mountaineers get closer and closer to the goal line, they stiffen up against the run. That leaves them susceptible through the air, but you love to see this defensive line just not give up, even though they give up those big plays. Once the Mountaineers get into the goal line, but Eli Drinkwitz with so many weapons Wearing gold jerseys today, just tough to keep them out of that painted area. Looks like the Mountaineers go into the power run game right here. And why wouldn't you with this offensive line? But ULM with some great resistance as they haven't blown the play dead. And now the Mountaineers go in the end zone and they're going to eventually go ahead and say that he has stopped short. Kind of an odd situation there. There is a Warhawk down on the play. Momentum stopped initially at the two yard line. You see the linesman come in to blow the play dead uh, really on the before the final the two players could come Third in down. and push Evans into the end zone. Can you see the Warhawks? We saw this the last time. The Mountaineers were knocking on the door, stiffening up against that run there on the goal line. But so many weapons on the outside for Eli Drink was just tough to keep them out of the end zone. But it will be big for them to hold the Mountaineers to three as opposed to seven. Mountaineers sitting here in a big situation. ULM on the opposite side trying to do anything they can to make sure that this Appalachian State team doesn't end up in the end zone again before we head to the end of the first quarter. They're going to try the quarterback sneak. And is he in the end zone? Yes. Mountaineers take the two touchdown lead over the Warhawks as they capitalize on the fumble. It's just tough to go on the road in the conference and get a victory. But when you're turning the ball over and having miscues, it makes it even harder. Now, the Warhawks had it working on their last offensive possession, coughed it up on the ground, and the Mountaineers take advantage. Just two total fumbles for the Warhawks here this season, or from Josh Johnson, I should say. And now they've come in back-to-back -back games as Chandler Staten packs on the extra point. You see this offensive line just take over and do their thing. Get some help from his tight end, Henry Pearson, behind him. But Zach Thomas with another touchdown on the ground. Mountaineers go up 14 in this one. Well, now it's just getting through the ebbs and flows of this contest as ULM's going to go back on offense. 
They still have that dynamic attack that can score a ton of points. But now you wonder whether or not it's in Johnson's mind that he's had a few miscues here after just rushing the ball all over the place this season. And the weather is definitely a factor. It's plenty wet out there, and it's hard to keep a hold of that football, especially for someone as talented and runs as hard as Josh Johnson does. He didn't just give the ball away. He was fighting for those extra yards. It's just hard to have that ball security, keep it high and tight when you're trying to get every last inch. And in a game like this, two division leaders, every inch counts. It does, and it's slippery out there. There's no doubt about that. You got to assume that. That ball is moving a little bit more in his arms than it normally is. It's also a lot cooler than the kick out of bounds. This season Kicking from team, Mahomes. number 91. By rule of all, we placed at the 35 yard line. First down. So now we'll see how this ULM offense is going to respond. Josh Johnson back out there. He's to the right of Caleb Evans. And this veteran quarterback trying to get his team back within just one possession. On the first rush, though, the Mountaineers with Noel Cook and Jordan Fair stop it before anything can get going. But I love the call right there by the Warhawks. You got your leader in the backfield. He's been having a good game. He puts it on the carpet. But what do you do? You go right back to him. You show him that you still have confidence in it. I like that from Matt Cuban. He gains a yard on the play as now Evans sits back in the pocket and he has a man on the outside. App State stops that. But the catch is made by Zach Jackson, the six foot, 200 pound redshirt sophomore from Grand Prairie, Texas. Another clean pocket right here for Caleb Evans. Has time to survey the field, go through his progression and find the open receiver. Believe it or not, that's a pretty big throw right there. You want to avoid those third and longs. Now you're in third and very manageable. You got options at this point with somebody like Josh Johnson, Caleb Evans in the backfield. Don't have to go all forward in one play through the air. Watch for Evans' legs on this play. He's going to do it with the arm. And a great tackle that time by Sean Jolly. Oh, my goodness. It looked like the Warhawks for sure had the first down. But the Mountaineer defensive back puts a stop to that. Mountaineers playing quarters to the field. See Caleb Evans time, finds an open receiver, but Sean Jolly with that speed to the outside. That's the toughest throw on the field. Try to go from one hash mark all the way to the other sideline. That gives enough time for Sean Jolly to break on the football and break up the pass attempt. It's a nice job right there by that young man. Jared Porter back out to punt here for the Warhawks. Plenty of room to get this one away. Thomas Hennigan back to return. He calls for the fair catch, and he will make it. A little bit more difficult when you got the precipitation in the air to get that fair catch, but Hennigan with as sure of hands as you'll find is successful there. So at the end of the first quarter, the Mountaineers with the 21-7 lead over the Warhawks. Their offense takes the ball back when we return. The sun's not exactly shining down on that A, but hey, it's mountain weather. And thus far, this Appalachian State offense wouldn't have it any other way as they just keep on rolling. Yeah, they're coming into this one averaging 41 points per game, picking up where they left off. 21 big time points in that first quarter. And don't look now, but they've got the ball again. So what a huge possession this is for the ULM defense and defensive coordinator Mike Collins. This has been a great defense at taking away the football. They almost get to Thomas this time, and enough pressure to where it's the incomplete pass. And that's the recipe for the turnovers that they've been able to generate on the season. When we talked with this coaching staff, we asked them, how, how are you able to generate 11 so far? He said, well, if we can get after the quarterback, we can put him in uncomfortable situations, then that forces passes just like that, which are susceptible to being picked off. That's a nice job right there defensively. Williams Jr. is now going to come behind Thomas. 
And he's going to get the handoff, but ULM read it the entire way. And a nice tackle that time with the arms and then with the body from Donald Lewis Jr., the defensive end. Donald Lewis Jr. is having himself a season. Seven tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and you see why there. The physicality, the speed to the ball, and then the strength to bring down the ball carriers. We've got another Warhawk down. Never like to see that. Yeah, that's Sam Miller, the defensive end, 6'3", 245. He's one of the fifth-year seniors on this Warhawk team from Canton, Texas. We're going to pause for a moment. It's not a perfect day here at The Rock by any means. In the 50s, we've had some drizzle, some light rain at different points during this contest. But nobody that's in this crowd today was going to miss the opportunity to see the 24th ranked Mountaineers take the field here at Kid Brewer Stadium, ranked for the first time. Something that so many people in this area were excited about and something that the Warhawks knew was going to be a big test coming in. And thus far, Pierre, everybody that came to this game is still here in the stadium enjoying it. Yeah, these Mountaineer fans used to seeing their team rank, but it was at the FCS level. A lot of number one national rankings for the Mountaineers during that time, but the first time as an FBS program to be ranked and to take your home field is huge. Last year, Mountaineers ranked 25th as they went down to Georgia Southern. Five turnovers later, no longer ranked. See the Warhawk getting up the carpet now, and being carted off. Never a good side when the cart has to come on the field. All you can do is bow your head and say a few words for, for that young man. Yeah, Sam Miller, the backup defensive end to Ty Shelby. So Shelby's going to have to have a bigger load, and this defensive line that rotates a lot for ULM will have to continue to do so. You see some hugs from all of his teammates. It's a close group on this ULM side of the ball defensively offensively special teams everybody that puts on that jersey every saturday has a very special connection that they've developed through their time together as we've told you a few times a lot of veteran players on this roster that have been together for a while they've gone through many different situations and they just want what's best for their teammate so he'll be carted off the field some great class here from the App State fans clapping for him as he is carted off. And it's tough to turn your attention from one of your brothers going down to, all right, we've got a big third down. We've got to stop this bleeding. We've got to stop the momentum that the Mountaineers have. Let's see how the Warhawks respond. So Thomas dropping back. He has a man all over him, but he misses. Thomas now spins away, and he's going to rush ahead. And oh my goodness, the dynamic legs of Zach Thomas. He was dead to rights, but there is a flag on the field. Tremendous job there, Zach Thomas, understanding the rush is coming and then using the B button to spin out of there. There is some laundry on the field, though. Malik Williams trying to block for his quarterback out there. This one may be coming back. We playing third down. That was the safety, Kilo Sweeney, that Almost had a very impactful hit on Thomas. Kilo Holding Sweeney. offense, number 13, 10-yard penalty. Repeat for a down. Kilo Sweeney, a guy that his coaching staff moved from cornerback to that inside position because when you play a lot of men, as the Warhawks do, you need somebody who can cover the slots. And Sweeney's skills there made him the man for the job, and he's turned out to be a tremendous move for this Warhawks team. See him there, just missing a sack. Very aggressive Warhawk defense. They got a lot of tackles for loss this year. It's because of the aggressive nature, because of the speed, and now they get a repeat, reprieve rather, here on third down. It's third and four for the Mountaineers. Thomas looking to his right. It's Corey Sutton that's going to get his first catch. And Sutton gets the first down. It's a tremendous pass right there by Zach Thomas. Gets the balls out of his hands very, very quickly there on a long throw to the opposite sideline. Corey Sutton, all hands here in the slick weather. And then the awareness to turn up the field 
past the sticks. Sutton normally the long ball catcher for the Mountaineers, but that time getting ahead of the sticks and successfully getting the first down. Thomas looking for the rush, but it never became available as ULM's defense read it perfectly. Broken play right there. Like Zach Thomas a little confused as the entire offense goes one way and he goes the opposite. Just does what he can to avoid a major hit on that play. But the way this Mountaineer offense has been able to move the ball all game long or early in this one, you got to feel that this is a big drive for this Warhawks defense. You got to find a way to stop the bleed to show that you can stop this offense. The fake here to Evans. He pumps, now throws. He has Corey Sutton, and Sutton is dropped as coming over and putting him down on the turf is Laurent Shaw, the defensive lineman, a guy that is a phenomenal player for this Warhawk crew. Played at two different junior colleges before coming to the Warhawks. Rated the number two interior tackler by Pro Football Focus in the Sun Belt. A guy that can get sacks, he can get tackles for loss. And he is the leader of that defensive line. Coach Collins telling us this week that if you want to stop him, you got to do it with two men. You can't do it with just one. Thomas going to the outside. It's Corey Sutton again. And Sutton has some space after he breaks the tackle. Hesitating away from his man. Now he's going to break to the outside. Still going before he's brought out of bounds. And Corey Sutton showing that he's not just a long ball catcher. He's got some fancy footwork as well. Good offensive football. One hash all the way to the other sideline. Toughest throw in football. And then the strength of Corey Sutton to break the tackle and then continue to spin the defender down the field to pick up a huge gain there. It's a big time play for the Mountaineers and the Warhawks team. They had the Mountaineers right where they wanted them, third and long situation, but they continue to struggle with giving up those big plays. Kerry Starks with some after play activity with Zach Thomas. Ball was snapped prior to the ready for play. First down. But they're just going to say that's some talking back and forth. Halloween's coming up, possibly talking about which costumes both of them are going to wear. Probably not, but you just never know. Mountaineers trying to go with some tempo there, excuse me, partner, but actually stepped the ball before the chains were moving, before the ready-to-play signal was given by the white hat. They want to go quick, but sometimes you're not allowed to. The handoff here to Darrington Evans. He's trying to find a gap to get ahead. And he won't be able to successfully get one as Cortez Cisco Jr. pushes him out of bounds. You see strength on strength, so much speed on both sides of the football. On most teams, the Mountaineers get that corner and Darrington Evans gets in the painted area, but it's so much speed in white jerseys today. They do a pretty good job of stopping Darrington Evans to just a moderate gain there. Thomas throwing over the top in the back of the end zone, just out of the reach of his intended target, as that was Thomas Hennigan that was looking for another touchdown. Like the aggressive play calling there by Eli Drink was understanding. I got second and very minimum. I've been running the ball very well. I could take a shot here. And Zach Thomas just a bit outside there for Thomas Hennigan off his fingertips. But another huge play there. Nice coverage in the back end. Again, when you got that tight coverage, you force the quarterback to make a perfect throw. Zach Thomas not able to do it there. Thomas looking to his left. Now he's going to spin away as some pressure comes his way. And Thomas trying to find his man won't be able to, as that was Malik Williams he was looking for. But once again, just moving those legs constantly, even with the pressure, he never panicked. But ULM does get the stop as now it's fourth and five. Mike Collins comes after Zach Thomas there, bringing the blitz. But if you're Mike Collins, the defensive coordinator of the Warhawks, you'll take this. This Mountaineer team's been moving the ball however they want, whenever they want. Today, you had to find a way to, to show your team that they could stop this offense, get some confidence, and, and to stop them and keep them out of the end zone here is big. Chandler State in three for four in field goal attempts this year and give him another successful make. 24-7, Mountaineers ahead here at the Rock.
Back at Kid Brewer Stadium, the Mountaineers get points that last drive, but Pierre at the same time, ULM doesn't allow them to get in the end zone. So now this offense that is so talented takes back over. And what do they have to do to get back to what they did that first drive when they were so dynamic? Settle down, go with what you know, keep the ball on the ground with your very talented running back and then get Caleb Evans involved in the rushing attack as well. He's gone over 100 yards several times this year on the ground. Utilize him as a weapon. The good news is you've been here before. The last time you were down 24-7, you were in Tallahassee and you took the Florida State Seminoles to overtime. Narrowly lost by a missed extra point. McCray flipped upside down as now some extracurricular activity comes between the Warhawks and the Mountaineers. And this is getting a little bit chippy as we move along. Now the veteran quarterback heads back out on the field. And Josh Johnson comes along with him. Josh Johnson's taking those gloves off. He's had on, trying to help with ball security. Sometimes in the rain, when you have those gloves on, they become a liability because they get more <laughs> slick than sticky. I like to see him going with the no glove look here to try to keep that ball high and tight and off the carpet. Caleb Evans is completed with the pass here, but Josh Thomas there as well, and Thomas plants his defender that time. Well, Josh Thomas is having himself a ball game thus far. Already a recover fumble down the field to set up another score, and that time you're playing NCAA 2K14. That's what we call a hit stick on the receiver. Big time play. They're going to go back to the ground as Josh Johnson gets a few. Jordan Fair rolls along with him, and that's a successful second down there for ULM. Now makes it third and one. And you're in a good situation here. Your run pass option heavy offense has the opportunity to stick that ball in the belly of the running back, see what the linebackers like to do, and then go over the top and behind him. The push ahead here for the Warhawks. And it looks like that'll be a successful first down. This is a methodical offense. They're not going to do it all at once. They might have some long drives. But as long as they end up in the end zone, that's all they care about. And they desperately need to do so before we head to halftime. And I really like what Matt Kubik is doing right here. Methodical drive. Keep your defense off the field and give him some rest. The Mountaineers read that the entire way as once again coming up huge is Sean Jolly. And Caleb Evans is going to see him and his nightmares as this App State defense has come to play today. Mountaineers playing a cloud coverage to the wide side of the field. Eyes in the backfield the whole time is Sean Jolly and just does a tremendous job of doing what he's coached to do, what every cornerback is coached to do at every level, high pointing the football. And he comes up with his third pick of the season. It's a nice job of just having ball skills, going up, playing the ball, not the man in that zone look. You're able to have your eyes in the backfield and another turnover by the Warhawks. Raquan Anderson comes in motion here and now the ball's loose. ULM after it. And we are going to have back-to-back -back turnovers as that was Kilo Sweeney that picks up the fumble. Raquan Anderson, the 5'9", 180-pound freshman that's now the third string We're running back on the field. for the it's Mountaineers. The recovered by the defense. He coughs First up down. the football, and now the Warhawks, just one play later, have a short memory, and they got it back on their side, moving towards their end zone. Huge play by the Warhawks here. You got a freshman running back in the game. Ball security not at a premium on that one. You just turned the ball over. You finally get some momentum with holding the Mountaineers to three on your last possession, and this time you get a sure enough stop with the turnover to give the ball back to your offense. Evans looking to the left side. Now he's going to try to do it with his legs. And he gets a nice game that time, as I believe that's a first down as well. And now some laundry coming on the field, possibly a late hit. This is going to be interesting because there's a flag in the backfield as well in the area of holding. And then that's probably going to be a dead ball foul. So a lot of times these penalties offset, but with one being a dead ball foul, you may get an automatic first down. 
but not as many yards as you would have had without that possible holding penalty. Tell you what, the way this offense has struggled the last several times on, on the field and the defense all day long, it's a huge turnover and play right here on first down. Here's Marshall Lewis. There are two fouls, one during the play and one after. Holding, offense, number 78. That 10-yard penalty be assessed from the previous spot. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense number 24. 15 yards from the end of that enforcement, that includes a first down. So that's a big call there because without that holding penalty from the Warhawks, they not only get a nice run from their quarterback that puts them on the right side of the 50, but an extra 15 yards, and now you're in business. But with the 10 yards marked off for the holding, you only gain five yards, but you do get a fresh set of sticks, and you are still on the right side of the 50. Still an eternity left here in the second quarter. And ULM wants to make this score closer and closer. It starts with scoring on this drive. The handoff to Johnson, and he squirts ahead for just a few. And Josh Johnson, a guy that is extremely hard, and that's putting it mildly to get a stop. He's been stopped for loss only four times in 106 attempts. And that's a nice job right there by Ted Roof, dialing up some pressure, saying we're not just going to sit back and let you either throw the ball or have a lot of room on the ground. Brings his free safety there in Desmond Franklin to come up and make the play at the line of scrimmage. They're going to go back to the ground as Johnson is brought down this time by Noel Cook. Wow, Noel Cook, another hard hit by these Mountaineers. Josh Johnson solid at 215, but Noel Cook not deterred. Comes up, it's a hat on the football, shoulder pad into a chest. Nice stop there to set up third and long situation right here. But this part of the field may not have to pick it up all at once, especially being down 24-7. This may be an opportunity that the Warhawks can't pass up on. The crowd gets loud here at the Rock. Evans sitting back in the pocket. And now the play is blown dead. The Mountaineer coaching staff said coming into this one, one of the keys was making Evans a pocket passer. This is a guy that is just a fantastic runner and has done it through his career. 1,709 yards on the ground. For the most part, he's been standing in the pocket all day. Though. Play game, offense, number six. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. That is a tough penalty right there for ULM. In a nice situation inside the 45, third and moderate situation to go. Now when you put yourself in those third and longs, so much tougher. Back to your point, Caleb Evans, he does some of his best work outside of the pocket on the run where he can extend the play. Sure, he can get out and, and get some yards on the ground, but he's most dangerous when he keeps his eyes upfield, gives his receivers an opportunity in the scramble drill to pick up major yardage. App State sending pressure. He throws ahead, and the catch can't be made by Peterson. No flags on the field, and this App State defense responds to the penalty, and the Warhawks will have to punt the football away, or maybe he'll just choose to punt the football away here with the fourth and long. Just a huge delay of game penalty, because without that, you have the opportunity to go for it there on fourth down. A fourth and long situation like this, just not a chance that the Warhawks want to take. So Porter back out to punt this one away. Thomas Hennigan back to return. Porter needs a good punt. And this oh, almost was. ULM thought that was going to bounce back, and they'd have a chance to pin the Mountaineers inside the five-yard line. One of the reasons that App State's offense had such trouble getting going last week, Pierre, was because they were always inside the five-yard line. Louisiana did such an incredible job with the punting game, but that trickle into the end zone lets the Mountaineers' offense start with plenty of room, and that's always dangerous. You felt the collective sigh of relief from this crowd and this coaching staff that they get to start on the 20 as opposed to inside the five. Important for this Mountaineer offense, though, get back on track after the turnover. 
A handoff here to Darrington Evans. Spins away from a tackler, slips through another. And Evans hopping up and down after that play. Just does so many incredible things on the field that make you open your eyes wider and wider. He is so tough to bring down in the open field. He's got the wheels to run away from you, but then he has that Barry Sanders like quick twitch there to stick a foot in the ground after he's running full speed and change direction. He's going to get it again here. He has some space. He gets through and is pushed out of bounds at midfield. Every single time that Evans touches the football, you wonder if he's going to be able to take it to the house. Just an incredible weapon for this App State football team. And you have to give so much credit to this offensive line, Pierre. They do such a phenomenal job of blocking the defensive line, giving him a ton of open windows. And once he gets to that second level, he's going to get a big gain no matter what. You know your offensive line is doing the job when your running backs aren't getting contacted until well on their way down the field. That is a dead giveaway. And this offensive line for the Mountaineers is doing it here again today. Back to Evans they go, but Rashad Harding, the linebacker, with the shoulder pass to push him out of bounds. When you take a look at the numbers, even with that negative play, Darrington Evans, buck 19 on the ground already. You already, you still have over six minutes left in the second quarter here. This offensive line has just been doing a tremendous job in the passing game as well. They've been giving Zach Thomas a lot of time back there, a lot of clean pockets. You see the Warhawks trying to switch it up with some pressure here and there, but this offense is just clicking for the Mountaineers. The Mountaineers with a much slower drive this time, trying to drain that clock, and a beautiful play at the line of scrimmage is coming up and making the tackle as Kerry Starks. That time, the Warhawks anticipating pass on second and long, so they bring the pressure, but it just turns into a run blitz. Their tremendous job off the edge there by the Warhawks getting into the backfield, being able to set up this third and long situation. Kerry Starks, a tremendous football player, and he shows you why right there. Thomas looking towards the sideline here, third and 13. Colin Reed goes to his right. He has Starks coming his way. Thomas evades the tackler. Now he tosses ahead to Williams Jr., but ULM will get their man as Rashad Harding comes up. There is a flag on the field, though. Flag in the area of holding, but this is an interesting call right here because you've stopped the Mountaineers. You forced a fourth down, but if you decline the penalty, will they go for it on fourth down? It's interesting There's to see no the chess match that ensues. Fourth down. They say no flag on the play, so let's see what this App State offense does. Looked for a moment like they were going to go for it, but now Thomas and the offense are walking off the field. The way your defense is playing so well against this vaunted ULM offense, why not trust them? Try to pin them deep, give yourself enough time here with five minutes left in the second quarter to get the ball back. Put yourself in a situation to put more points on the board before you go into the locker room. Sabach, number 33 in the country, with a net average of 40.9 yards. He booms this one away, and it's a good one. Oh, another play from these special teams where it was almost stopped inside the five, but trickles into the end zone. ULM's offense takes over when we return. Slippery over there on the track, but still some dancing going on up and down, some playing with the flags as ULM heads back out on offense. And certainly this is a key drive for this group, Pierre, but this is such a talented offense. You're talking about 29th in the country in total offense, 462.8 yards per game. They need a drive here from their senior quarterback. He's going to throw ahead, and the catch cannot be made by Peterson as it falls out of his palms. You got to think the elements are playing a factor for the Warhawks right now. They are used to beautiful, sunny weather. It has been hot in Louisiana so far this year. You come to Boone, North Carolina, in these hills, and it's 50-some-odd degrees, raining outside. You've seen a few drop passes, fumbles there. The elements definitely playing a factor. 
Johnson hit at the line of scrimmage, and he is wrapped up by DeMarco Jackson. This Appalachian State defense just gets better and better as the season's moved along. Blitz package on right there for Ted Roof and his defense, and DeMarco Jackson knows exactly what to do once he gets into the backfield. The physicality to bring down the very stout Josh Johnson in the backfield, setting up another third long situation. A tackle for loss that time from Johnson. He went 69 consecutive carries this season without having one of those. Pressure coming here from Evans. He evades it, throws over the top. Nobody in the area. And ULM is going to have to punt it away once again as this App State defense makes him go three and out. And that is not what the Warhawks had drawn up. Caleb Evans right there, not happy with his intended receiver, Perry Carter. It's like Carter may have ran the wrong route there. He's still coaching him up there on the sideline, trying to get him in the right direction. He understands the sense of urgency right now. He understands the opportunities that they've had. Had the ball on the right side of the 50 on a turnover. Had the ball on a rear stop by their defense. Got to be able to cash in. Mountaineers almost got to it that time. And a beautiful tackle from the Warhawks is coming up and making sure Thomas Hennigan didn't have a chance to return that is Jaquan Bloomfield, the wide receiver. It's a tremendous play by Bloomfield. Coming down full head of steam, times it up perfectly, and then finishes at the point of attack. Tremendous play. For this Mountaineer offense, you got an opportunity right here. End of the second quarter, 340 left to drain this clock down. Maybe put another six on the board. That may be a backbreaker. Even though this four team formation. is known for their Four's second four half in the back heroics, Number 42. they're definitely a second half Five team if they're the the best the end of the kick. First down. This is a group that has not gotten off to many fast starts this season. And that's not just in the first quarter. That's the second quarter as well. So you know that they're going to have something ready for this App State crew when we return from halftime. They'd love to possibly get an interception or a fumble here, get the ball back with their offense, or get the Mountaineers to have a three and out. Thomas fakes the handoff. Now he's looking down the middle. He has a man, and that's Malik Williams who will catch it at the 45-yard line. And you just can't say what a big drive this is for both of these teams with their momentum sits right now. Yeah, that spot right here, the linesman is trying to get the spot. He's stopping play right here because Malik Williams actually caught the ball at about the 43. And so his forward motion was stopped by the defense. But now they're getting the spot right for the main. You see the collective cheer <laughs> from the Mountaineer the fans was here. Then subsequently pushed back. First down. Play by Zach Thomas, avoiding the rush, seeing some open field, but not taking off, keeping his eyes down the field, making a play. Just off the fingertips that time of Henry Pearson, the intended target. Nice job right there by Austin Holly, a safety for the Warhawks, who has really come on as of late, does a tremendous job of, of timing that one and knocking it away from the hands of Pearson. This is a big-time drive for both teams here. For the Mountaineers, you understand that the Warhawks are a second-half team, so you want to separate yourselves as much as possible. And for the Warhawks, you want to stop the bleeding. Darrington Evans with the rush here. And Kerry Starks is going to get his back and drag him down. So now that's going to make it a third and four here for the Mountaineers. It seems like they always find a way to make it a third and short. Don't find themselves in too many third and long situations. And that's one of the reasons they're able to convert so many first downs. When you have more weapons than Tony Stark, even in these third and short situations is where you want to be because you got options. Who is Tony Stark for the people that don't know? Iron Man, he may be known to you out there as Iron Man, but that young man sure did have a lot of weapons on that seat, didn't he? <laughs> Thomas rolling out to his left, has some pressure coming. He has Hennigan. Hennigan trying to shake away, and he's pushed out of bounds. But that is another first down for the Mountaineers. And Zach Thomas does such a good job for 
a guy that's in just his junior season and has only been playing really for two seasons. I've just taken the easy play instead of trying to stretch it out. They go to Sutton this time. And Sutton gains a few. See, that's what we talk about with all the weapons. You go Thomas Hennigan one play. You go Corey Sutton another play. Darrington Evans, Zach Thomas touches the ball each and every play, so he is always dangerous. Just as a defense, you got to try to pick your poison in. How do you go about stopping this team? It's the reason why they're averaging right at 41 points per game. Thomas looks towards the sideline. Now he's going to come closer to his offensive line before he backs up again. He'll keep it himself. Shakes away from a defender, and Zach Thomas with a fancy footwork off the right side. The athleticism from the junior quarterback from the Mountaineers is simply incredible, and he's going to want to see that one on his highlight reel. Zach Thomas here gets to the line of scrimmage and then gives the defensive end the okie doke, plants a <laughs> foot into the ground, and then shows off the wheels. Nice play. Darrington Evans diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Mountaineers. They need a big drive, and they get it, as now they've put up 30 points here in the first half. This ULM defense not able to get the big stop they desired. And as you were talking about, with so many weapons, it's just a lot of guys you got to stop in order to slow down this App State crew. How about that drive from the Mountaineers? You give it up on a turnover, the field, then you get stopped down. on downs by this defense, or actually not stopped on downs, but forced to punt by this defense after having all the momentum early, not deterred on that drive. And the biggest difference, the big play. As you see, one right here by Mr. Zach Thomas. As we take a look at this replay, it looks like Danton Evans Got across the plane there without his knee touching the ground, but that is going to be close. Again, the ruling on the field was a touchdown, so it's got to be inconclusive evidence. That is close. Ball in the outside arm. Stretches for that end zone for that left knee touches. That's the review. The runner was down inside the one-yard line. It'll be second to go from there. That knee just a tad bit short. And now App State's going to have to punch it in once again. Let's take another look as we have this fantastic angle from our ESPN Plus crew. And as we slow it down for you here, you see Evans. Knee down. And, yep. Ball and he's down. Outside of the plane. That's great camera work, first of all, by the crew. But that's a great job by this replay crew of not taking too much time. They saw that he, he was shorter than line. They put more time on the clock how they were supposed to and now let the guys play ball. Well, tough situation here for this defensive line, stopping this App State offensive line. They fake the handoff. Thomas trying to go to the outside. In the back of the end zone, he has his man, Colin Reed, with the touchdown. They couldn't get the rush, but they get the pass. My goodness, so many weapons. That's a tremendous job by Eli Drinkwitz. You see, the play fake here brings everybody to the line of scrimmage. Colin Reed, all by his lonesome in the back of the end zone, does a tremendous job of keeping those toes inside of play and coming down with the football. You know, when you run the ball effectively, you make defenses respected. And that play fake, all it did was draw all the boys in white jerseys to the line of scrimmage. Colin Reed just sneaks right behind him. That's a tremendous play call. Everybody in this stadium thought it was going to be a rush up the middle, let the offensive line go to work. Eli Drinkwitz had something else in mind, and it results in a touchdown as here Staten will try to tack on the point after for the Mountaineers to continue to extend this lead. Aiton's kick is up, and it is good. Talk about accuracy. This is a guy that has been so consistent, 121 of 121 for his career with point after. You see the play fake there. Everybody at the line of scrimmage. And Colin Reed just sneaks right behind him. But you notice the last time, last two or three times, the Mountaineers have been knocking on the doorstep. 
This ULM defense has done a tremendous job of stepping up and stopping the run. Eli Drinkwitz, being the offensive genius that he is, understands that, uses the play fake to his advantage and the aggressive nature of this defense against them. And Colin Reed comes up with a big time catch in the end zone. Mountaineers able to separate themselves even more before the halftime break. As we talked about before that drive, this is a second half ULM team, a dynamic offense. You can never count them out, but they have a big hill to climb. They're facing the 24th ranked team in the country in the Appalachian State Mountaineers. They've been here before though. They've been down in games and have continued to fight, continue to come out and give their best effort. You expect nothing less of them here. ULM will bring this one out, but App State's special teams unit all over that play as that was Carter Jr. that brought it out. And the Mountaineers special teams unit has done a great job, full steam ahead, of stopping the resistance of the ULM special teams. If you're this ULM offense, you have got to get something going in the positive direction. Run game has been slow since the first drive, passing game, shortly thereafter because everything is set up off the run. Right now with a minute 12 on the clock, you just want to get yourself in a position to get something positive and maybe even get three on the board before you hit the locker room. This isn't normally a quick strike offense, but they do have that capability with Evans. He throws over the top. This is a duck that never had a chance to reach its intended receiver. And speaking of duck, Clifton Duck, the former Great Mountaineer cornerback uh, was field, recognized a moment pass. ago. Second A.J. Down. Howard, who's currently with the Baltimore Ravens. Doug Middleton, who was with the Miami Dolphins earlier this year. Marcus Cox, the all-time leading rusher. And Clifton Duck, currently with the XFL's St. Louis Battle Hawks as of earlier this week. All here at the game for homecoming. Evans looks to his left. Now he's going to rush. Finally gets some room ahead to use his legs. And he gets across the 30-yard line. That's what you got to have, some type of positive play for your offense. Just a design quarterback run right there. Caleb Evans does a tremendous job of getting up the field and setting up this third and short situation. Third and one here for ULM. The clock continues to tick. They go to the outside, and the catch can't be made. And some normally sure-handed players for the Warhawks have not been able to grab it and move ahead as Malik Jackson that time gets the drop. Now they're going to have to punt away. The elements in football make a huge difference. And again, it's a team that's used to sunny weather and very, very hot weather. It is the exact opposite <laughs> here in Boone, North Carolina, and it is showing with this ULM offense. I mean, plays that are usually made just Passes being dropped, and Evans not able to find open receivers. Got to give a little credit to Mother Nature here. Jared Porter back out to punt. He's had a lot of attempts here today. And this is another good one. Thomas Hennigan back to return. He calls for the fair catch. And now 23 seconds left here in the half for the Mountaineers. You think they try to advance the ball forward, or? Just go ahead and knee it and head to halftime with that 31-7 lead. Well, with as well as you played today, don't want to give ULM any type of momentum or anything to hang their hat on and going into the locker room break here. Make sure you stay with us for halftime, college basketball fans. The season is not too far away as we'll have college football and college basketball at the same time. Always such a fun time of the year. We'll have the chance to speak to first year head coach for the App State Mountaineers, Dustin Kearns. As this goes to the outside and the catch is made, a new receiver for the Mountaineers that time, Keyshawn Watson with his first catch of the day. Keyshawn Watson, transfer student, coming in, making an impact today. And Eli Drinkwitz may look to put more points on the board here, understanding what we talked about earlier. This is a true second half time, time team. So, the more you can separate yourselves from the better. The runner was do have out about three times. Please reset left. the game clock to 16 seconds. One six seconds. Clock will start on the snap. Got your full complement of timeouts. 
16 seconds. Don't even necessarily have to go to the sideline. Right now in the defense is looking for those throws with it being late in the game, but those throws over the middle deep could get you where you want to be. Thomas sits back in the pocket. Now he's going to throw over the top. And he was looking for Malik Williams, but more so just threw it out of bounds. Nine seconds left before halftime. Nice job right there defensively. ULM standing tall, giving up a lot of points and a lot of yards here in this first half. Still fighting hard here, understanding every point matters. You've got an explosive offense on your hands the way they do. Caleb Evans can go off at any moment. Josh Johnson can go off at any moment. So to keep yourselves as close as possible to the Mountaineers is paramount. The handoff here to Williams Jr. He gets to the outside. And we see the first down marker fall down there. You're going to drop that thing if you see some big guys running in your area. You don't want to stand up and take that hit if you're a part of the chain gang. <laughs> They got out of there in a hurry. So now just three seconds left here for the Mountaineers before the break. Interesting call right here. See if the Mountaineers try to take a shot with three seconds. They're going to keep it on the ground, but we have a flag on the far side of the field. It's like the receiver, Thomas Hennigan, not set on the far side of the field. Like, we'll start offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. There is no option for a 10 second runoff as the clock was not running at the time of the foul. So, third and nine here for the Mountaineers. They hand it off to Williams Jr. He's going to spin around. Now he has some space. A great run this time. But the clock does expire. And we are going to head to halftime. App State with a great first half. Newly ranked number two. A look at some of the Mountaineer fans on the hill. Still enjoying this one with App State holding the 31-7 lead. But Pierre, as we turn things over towards the second half, it's going to be the Warhawks that are going to have to get things much more like they had during that first drive. And we'll take a look at some of those highlights right now. The way they did it on the ground, just physicality. As you see them finishing in the end zone right there, K and White. But the Mountaineers, quick response. Darrington Evans, 59-yard run into the end zone, throwing up those cute all hooks on homecoming. And Zach Thomas, two touches through the air, one right there to his favorite target. And Thomas Hennigan and the defense chipping in, forcing turnovers, setting up more points for the Mountaineers. They wasn't done yet. Got it done through the air as well. Big play receiver Corey Sutton in the done there and defensively more turnovers just doing the job today are the Mountaineers it's the second touchdown for Zach Thomas to his trusted tight end Colin Reed they have got it rolling 380 yards of total offense in one half of football what can you say about Eli Drinkwitz in this Mountaineer offense this has been an incredibly impressive performance but as we mentioned many times during the end of that first half, this is a ULM group that has been a second half team this year. And it's a veteran group. They've been in a lot of different situations with their extensive college football careers. So they want to make sure that they get off to a strong start here in the third quarter and start to flip this score closer towards their side. Slow start seemed to be the theme with ULM this season. You thought it may flip around after that first possession. Marched right down the field into the painted area, but ever since that point, stagnant offensively and just had a hard time stopping the Mountaineers offense conversely. But again, as you say, they have been here many of times and in hostile environments, down as much as 17 down at Dope Campbell Stadium, came all the way back to take the lead and then take the nose to overtime. They are not intimidated here today. When you have a big play offense like the Warhawks have, you are never out of a game. That's why you saw Eli Drink was trying to put more points on the board with 16 seconds left. 
on this final possession of the second quarter. You are never too far out in front of Caleb Evans. Jacob Meeks will boom it away here for ULM. Back to return as always, Darrington Evans and Thomas Hennigan. App State is 17th in the country with 28.8 yards per kickoff. The lefty skies it, and Evans will knee it in the end zone, so the Mountaineer offense will take over. And Pierre, now if you're ULM, you've had that entire first half to see a lot of different angles from this App State offense. You've seen all the playmakers, you've seen a bunch of different plays from head coach Elia Drinkwitz and offensive coordinator Elia Drinkwitz. So how do you turn things over and have a very strong second half to try to give your offense a chance to get back in this thing. Team's done a tremendous job all season long of going into the locker room break, making adjustments, especially Mike Collins and his unit, and then turnovers, turning the tie to see if they can force some here. Evans with the rush, a great form tackle that time by the ULM Warhawks as that was Lawrence Shaw that made it and Shaw's gonna have to be a big player in the second half. You see this ULM front seven already looking a lot better than they did in the first half. It's those adjustments in the locker rooms why coaches are paid the big bucks. You see it paying off early on that play. If you're the Mountaineers, conversely, you're like a lone methodical drive ending with points to break the spirit and the will of the Warhawks. Thomas fades back. Now he has the rush ahead, goes off the right side, and his legs push him forward. As he's pushed out of bounds on the play by Corey Strauder, the cornerback. But Zach Thomas is just so dynamic with the way that he can throw the ball and also the way that once he gets outside the pocket, he can move those legs in the right direction. We talked a lot about the speed of this ULM defense. It just goes to show you just how fast Zach Thomas is quick as grease lightning. He gets that corner and sets up a third and short here. Third and one for the Mountaineers. No jump that time from ULM. They try the handoff, and it is successful from Darrington Evans as once again this App State offensive line pushes ahead, and he had the first down before he was even touched. They just continue to do a great job all afternoon long. As you take a look at the quarterbacks here. Very efficient, Zach Thomas, 13 of 21, 152 and two tugs. Caleb Evans, a little more tough sled and a lot of pressure in his face. And when you can't get the rushing game going, that puts a lot of pressure on you as a quarterback. Pressure coming here from ULM and Kerry Starks with that pressure. One of the first guys to bring down Darrington Evans. See the concerted effort right here by the Mountaineers to keep things on the ground. Try to run this clock. You're up 24. You got an explosive offense on the other side of the field. Want to keep them off of it as much as you can and add to this lead. Thomas Hennigan comes in motion. They fake the handoff to him, and now off his back foot, Thomas trying to throw the ball to the outside. Busy covering that time was the corner, Kilo Sweeney. Check that safety, Kilo Sweeney. If he would have abandoned his wide receiver and come after that ball, that could have possibly been a pick for ULM. That was a duck in the air from Thomas. That's just good defense. First up front, you see the pressure brought by defensive coordinator Mike Collins. Forces Zach Thomas to throw off his back foot, even though his receiver is even with the quarterback, can't get the power behind the throw like he wants to, and it forces the incompletion. A monstrous play here, third and nine. Thomas has pressure from all angles. He evades it, and Zach Thomas slides across midfield. Wow. What more can you say but wow? It is the gift and the curse, the man coverage. As you see the red seat come open for Zach Thomas there, and all the defensive secondary is in man, so they're tied up with their defenders. If you don't get home with that initial wave in your pass rush, there's a lot of room for an athletic quarterback such as Zach Thomas. Marcus Williams Jr. shakes to the right side, and now he's tackled after gaining a couple 
But Pierre, that is great on first and second down there for ULM. If you're on that defense, which you've been on that side many times in your career, how do you respond to the quarterback having a play like that? You get him in that third and long situation, and he still is able to get the first down. It's demoralizing. It is the toughest thing in football to try to combat a, a dual threat quarterback. Malik Williams off the right side. He shakes away and gets another Malik first Williams. down for the Mountaineers. Yet another weapon out of the two bet of Eli Drinkwitz, Malik Williams, junior receiver. A lot of speed there around the corner. You see the Mountaineers going up the middle, up the middle, everything up the middle. And then just when you thought you were safe on the perimeter, Malik Williams around the corner. This offense is clicking right now out of the halftime break. One consistent trend with every head coach and every defensive coordinator we've talked to this year is just how talented this App State offense is. And when we ask them if they have any weaknesses, they most of the time simply say no. Thrown over here to Darrington Evans. He tries to get away from a block, does so very strategically, and now slides across the 20-yard line. We talked about earlier Zach Thomas just being a great conductor of this offense. See him go through his progression, and then don't try to force anything. Come down to your check down, running back, and Darrington Evans, and then Evans, the wherewithal to allow the receiver down the field to set up his block and cut back inside instead of giving himself up out of bounds, picking up huge yardage. That's good offense. Mountaineers go back to the ground, this time with Evans. He's tackled by the ankles that time. Barrington Evans having himself a pretty good ball game partner on the ground. He's nearing that 200 yard mark mm. through the air, just continues to hurt you. Junior had a chip on his shoulder coming to this one. Heard a lot about Josh Johnson and rightfully so tremendous season for Josh Johnson for the Warhawks. Darrington Evans clearly took that personally. He came out with something to prove. Raquan Anderson back in the game, but it's Williams Jr. that gets the carry. And ULM stops that as Jalen Veasley, the defensive lineman, makes it a third and six. Something you don't see a lot from this Mountaineer team, a two-back set right there using the speedster and Raquan Anderson in the, in the form of a decoy. You take a look, the offensive line there, Ryan Newzel. They have just done the job again today getting down, getting dirty in the trenches, making waves for these running backs to go out and do their T-H-I-N-G. Pressure coming from Thomas. He throws to the outside. He has Darrington Evans, and Darrington Evans has a touchdown again. This App State offense is simply unbelievable. Just when we thought we'd seen it all from this Appalachian offense, the screen game comes into play. What a big time drive here. By the team in black and gold to come out of the locker room, you're already up 24. You know you got a team on their heels. You come out, methodically go down the field, and end it in the painted area. Chandler staying on for the point after here for the Mountaineers. And he is successful, and it makes it a 38-7 lead for Appalachian State. <laughs> It's just intelligence right here by Eli Drinkwitz. You know the pressure is coming. And so you set up the screen perfectly. Zach Thomas with the moxie, the stand in the pocket, and the poise to be able to find Darrington Evans, who lets his athleticism take over. Mountaineers up big. A gorgeous shot there of the area here surrounding Kid Brewer Stadium. The App State Mountaineers with the 38-7 lead over the West Division leader, the 2-0 in the Sun Belt Conference, ULM Warhawks. This has been a statement game thus far for the 24th ranked Mountaineers. As this is brought out by Carter, and once again, the App State Special Teams Unit just does not let the ULM returner get very far as that's Keyshawn Johnson, the linebacker with the tackle. And Pierre, it's been all three phases today from the Mountaineers. It's been the offense, the defense, and the special teams 
that have just been wildly impressive. It's a team that only lost two games a season ago, had 16 returning starters between the offense and the defense, but almost an entirely new coaching staff. So you didn't know how they would respond to that, but they've just progressively gotten better, especially this defense. And it's playing to the tune of just seven points today. Caleb Evans has pressure from Akeem Davis Gaither, so he tosses ahead. And DeMarco Jackson shuts that down before McCray can gain much yardage. And coming into this game, you and I were both just blown away at this ULM offense. You got a quarterback in Evans that is close to 10,000 career yards rushing and passing in his career, over 8,000 a day with his arm. And you got a dynamic running back that's seventh in the country in Johnson. But this App State defense has been unbelievable as Johnson gets a few yards here. It's a ULM offense that averages over 200 yards per game on the ground. They're under 100 for the day. They average over 30 points per game. They're at seven today. Ted Roof has just continuously harped on his team about progression and getting better. And, and today the focus was the rush lanes, keeping the integrity of those rush lanes to keep Caleb Evans from making plays outside of the pocket. They've been able to do the job today. Evans drops back. He doesn't have it on the left side. Does he have it on the right side? No, instead he has the turf as he is brought down by EJ Scott. And App State's defensive line when giving time today has given Evans a ton of pressure. We talked about the integrity of the rush lane, and you see it right there. Caleb Evans not able to get outside of the pocket. He has to step up, and when he does that, these defensive linemen just submerge on him. E.J. Scott there, just the physicality to bring down Evans, who is not a small gentleman for the loss, and another stop by the Mountaineers. Porter with the kick here. Thomas Hennigan will call for the fair catch. And the Mountaineers offense will take over once again. ULM can't get anything going as they have another three and out. We'll be back in a moment. A happy student section here at The Rock as they sing along to Neil Diamond. And it's raining, so that gentleman that you see that chose not to wear a shirt to the stadium today, possibly his mom's watching along with us, saying, man, I wish he would have worn a shirt, but <laughs> something is allowing him to be out in these elements. Not sure what that could be. Thomas throws over the top, and the play is made by the Warhawks. Coming up and making the pick is Jordan Oliver, the 5'11", 173-pound redshirt freshman from Richmond, Texas. Not normally one of the guys on the corners, but he gets the ball back in the Warhawks' possession. Tremendous job by Jordan Oliver, doing what we talked about earlier, high-pointing the football and coming down with it when the Warhawks needed a stop in the worst way. Some change situation here for this defense of the Mountaineers. See if the Warhawks can take advantage, get back to doing what they were doing earlier in, to, in the, today's game, rather keeping it on the ground and then opening up opportunities for Caleb Evans through the air. Well, there's your turnover ULM offense. Let's see what they have in store. They're going to a new quarterback here. Wow, as the catch is made over the top. That's made by Zach Jackson. And Colby Suits is now in the game at quarterback for ULM. The 6'3", 242-pound redshirt freshman from Forney, Texas. That is a pretty ball down the sideline. Finding Zach Jackson, the speedster. Another big time play. Back-to-back -back big plays for the Warhawks. Looking for a spark right here offensively. They're getting it in the form of Kobe Suits. Wonder whether or not an injury happened to Caleb Evans as Josh Thomas with the coverage that time causes the incomplete pass. We did not expect to see Kobe Suits in this game. This is a guy that played at Ole Miss as a freshman, has played in three games this season, but his statistics are just four passes for 11 yards, an interception, and 42 yards prior to that last completion. Looked pretty good on play number one, partner. As he aired it out down the sideline to Mr. Jackson. And the Warhawks are in business. So not sure if it's a spark the Warhawks are looking for. He's in due to injury. He hands it off here, 
And Jordan Fair with the tackle as that's a new running back in the game as well for ULM. Ja'Kyle Holmes, the 5'9", 202-pound redshirt sophomore. Well, Hawks looking for a spark wherever they can. When you bring in suits, you get that throw in the billy, but may not have the same set of wheels that Caleb Evans have. But you're in a pretty good situation right here. Probably four down territory. Don't have to get it all here in one chunk, especially being down 31. Clock ticking away in the third quarter. Holmes was previously fifth on the depth chart, but he gets the carry there. Suits drops back, pressure coming from the Mountaineers, and it is picked off by Jordan Fair. Wow, the App State defense comes up huge again as Jordan Fair says, I'll take that. Mountaineers bring the pressure, but can't get home to Suits. But what do you do when you can't get to the quarterback partner? You get big sometimes you can knock the ball down and then sometimes you could just elevate and pick off a pass just like Jordan Fair right there the leader in the middle for this App State defense big time turnover right there ULM having all the momentum they get a turnover themselves then a big play to piggyback off of that and Jordan Fair turns the tie in one failed swoop two turnovers apiece for each of these teams as now the handoff goes to Williams Jr. He dances around. The App State offensive line pushing him forward, but his forward progress will be stopped. That's a play that you see a lot of times. The linebacker, he judges it right. He jumps up. He has the right timing, but the ball just slips through his hands. How hard of a play is that to go from being in coverage to jumping up and not only getting your palms on it, but securing it in just a split second. Extremely difficult. There's a reason why you're playing defense. Most of the time, you don't have the set of mitts that it <laughs> takes to be on offense. So that's a tremendous play right there by Jordan Fair. Thomas looking to his right. He has Henry Pearson across midfield and across the 55-yard line, actually. So the 45 yard line, some would say. Nice route right there by Henry Pearson. And another clean pocket for Zach Thomas. Just finds his sophomore tight end down the field. Martin Mountaineers continuing to march down the field right now. Looking to add to this already tremendous lead. Zach Thomas throws ahead. The ball is tipped and off of the fingertips of Austin Hawley, the safety for ULM. Been one of those days for ULM. Prime position to get the ball right back here. Nothing but green grass in front of Austin Hawley, but just can't pull it in on the deflection. Austin Hawley, though, has been tremendous for this Warhawks team. He's been inserted into the lineup the past couple of days. He's got great size, very physical, can run with the slot receivers in that all-important position on the Warhawks defense. Raquan Anderson with his first carry since he had the fumble earlier in the game. And he's pushed out of bounds here by Kerry Starks. And Pierre, in this game, we've seen uh, two teams that coming in were pretty secure with the way that they took care of the football. More often, it was them taking it away from the other team. But we've seen a lot of drop passes, a lot of balls on the carpet, a lot of different scenarios where you wonder how much the elements have had an impact on today's contest. Always have an impact, whether it's sunny or whether it's like this today, especially with the cold weather. It's already hard enough to catch the ball with the weather being cold. But when you add the wetness of the rain to that scenario, it makes it very, very difficult. Thomas going back shoulder here. And Malik Williams has that pass broken up as ULM with some great coverage that time. One of the guys in the area was Kilo Sweeney, the safety. It's a nice job by Sweeney of having closing speed to track that ball down and break it up from Mr. Williams. That could have been six on the board for the Mountaineers, but we talked about this speed from the Warhawks defense. It's their best attribute, and you see it on full display right there. Brandius Batiste back to return. And this is a great punt by Xavier Sabach as App State's going to down it at the two-yard line. And that is the last thing that ULM needed. They'll have bad field position when we return.
a really cool moment here at Kid Brewer Stadium right now as some of the men that have served our country are down on the field being recognized. There was a flyover with two helicopters prior to the game here today. And it's always so special to see the people that do so much for this country get the recognition that they deserve. You better believe it. Those young men right there give their all not only for the state, not only for the region, but for the entire country deserve all the recognition that they get. It's still Colby suits in the game here for ULM. As the handoff this time, I believe went to another new running back. Yeah, that's Austin Vaughn that's getting the first opportunity here on the day. Vaughn was the backup running back, but he's seen three other guys get the ball before he did that time. This is a deep running backs room for ULM. They had about five guys in the mix coming out of camp. You're seeing all their talent on display today. Desmond Franklin stops this at the line of scrimmage. And now it's going to be a third and long here for ULM. Josh Johnson having himself a tremendous season. But coming into the, the first game of the year, he was not the starter. There were about four or five guys in the mix. And it happens that Josh Johnson had himself a tremendous game against Grambling State. Then again, the, the next time out against Florida State and separating themselves, but they've got just as much talent as the Mountaineers do at the running back position. Colby suits in the end zone. Demetrius Taylor there, and he gets out of the end zone at about the two-yard line, but they're going to have to punt from the end zone after the App State defensive line comes through again. It is just tough to be down 31 against this Appalachian defense. The way they are so talented in their front seven. You see Demetrius Taylor get in there, trying to rip at that football. He's so good at not just getting the sack, but taking the ball away and creating opportunities to either score defensively or give your offense an opportunity. But being down this big in these types of elements with the rain coming down, you're not used to the cold weather. It's just not a good recipe. Jared Porter with the punt here. Thomas Hennigan will catch, and he has an opportunity to run it this time. Hennigan off the right side. A, a great gain there as he's pushed Hennigan out of bounds. And Pierre, we've seen a lot of different backups here for ULM in the second half, and still with so much time left in this game, I kind of wonder the reasoning for that. What do you make of the reason that we've seen Matt Viator go to so many guys that didn't get the starting nod coming into this one. Could be a number of reasons. Could be looking for a spark just like you got on the first play with your backup quarterback and Mr. Suits going down the field to his receiver in Jackson. It could be you're trying to get more guys involved. You're trying to get them more experienced because this game is bigger or this season is bigger than d just this game. They're still in first place in the Western Division. Almost everybody has a loss in the conference with the exception of these two teams. So could be one of the other of those, but you'd like to see more guys get on the field, get more tape. You see a Mountaineer down there, never like to see that. Yeah, that's Raquan Anderson that's down for App State. That's his third carry here of the game. And after rolling around for a moment, he'll be checked on by the App State athletic staff and now hobbling around a tad. You can see him get up. A lot of injuries there in this Mountaineer backfield. You take a look at ULM's upcoming schedule. It does not get any easier from here. Arkansas State at home, Georgia State, who went to Rocky Top and got a victory. On the road at Georgia Southern, always tough. Coastal Carolina, who's playing well, and then the bitter rival in Louisiana, <laughs> the last game of the season. It only gets tougher that hill to climb from here. Thomas dropping back, goes to the outside, and he has Corey Sutton. But both of these teams know that this game isn't the end of the season. Mountaineers, long way to go as well. Unbeaten on the year, but again, just their third conference game, trying to find their way back into the Sun Belt Championship game at the end of the year. 
They like to get some more guys on film as well. Like to stay away from injuries if they could. Now as they go into the fourth quarter, up 31, they find themselves in pretty good shape on this Saturday. A 38-7 lead for the Mountaineers as they head to the final quarter here at Kid Brewer Stadium. You see how slippery the track is here at Kid Brewer Stadium, but it hasn't bothered the Mountaineers as the 24th ranked team in the country has a 38-7 lead over the ULM Warhawks. Let's take a look at their upcoming schedule here for the Mountaineers, and it's a tough one. This is a group that in the middle of Sunbelt play is going to have to take on a South Carolina crew that is all sorts of impressive. Also going to have a matchup against Georgia Southern, the bitter rival. You always know that those rivalry games are going to bring a lot of different elements that maybe you can't plan for. Mountaineers have matchups against Texas State here for Black Saturday and Senior Day, and then will close out the season, regular season that is, against Troy at Troy before they hope returning here to the Rock to play in the second ever Sunbelt Conference Championship game and trying to get another league title. The flip here to Malik Williams, and Malik Williams is tossed down at the 20-yard line. Nice open field tackle right there by Austin Harley who does a tremendous job of just sizing up Malik Williams, not going for the fake, and then bringing them down. Nice, clean play. Open field like that. Those are the toughest tackles to make. Tremendous job right there by 15. Thomas looking at the Mountaineer sideline. And now he'll creep closer to his offensive line before getting the snap off here. Pressure coming from ULM. And the Mountaineers gain a few that time as now they finally blow this play dead. You were talking about prior to this game how last year App State was ranked 25th in the country. Then the Mountaineers went and had a turnover game at Georgia Southern. Zach Thomas got injured in that game and all of a sudden that ranking was no more. Here this year, this is a group with the way that they've played today that says not only do we want to be ranked, but we think we can even move higher in the country because this group is certainly with some of the stuff that's going on in college football today going to have a chance to not only stay in the rankings, they'll of course do that if they can close this one out, but move up as well. It's a confident group. It's a group that's a year older from a season ago. Mostly sophomores last year when they got that ranking now, they have that experience and they're playing like they belong. They're not playing as if, oh my goodness, we've made it into the top 25. Now with that experience as juniors and seniors as opposed to sophomores and juniors, you're seeing the, the finished product on the field. And it trickles from the top bottom. Handoff here to Williams Jr. He stretches ahead. He did get the first down, and he might just get the opportunity here to try to rush it in for a touchdown. See a great push right here by the right side of that offensive line for the Mountaineers. Cole Garrison there on that right side leading the charge. ULM stops it here on first down. Mountaineers are one of 12 unbeaten teams in FBS football. The other unbeaten group of five schools are currently number 13, Boise State, and number 19, SMU. A little extracurricular right there after the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 10. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. That's number 10's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. This has to be such an unbelievably frustrating game for the Warhawks. This weather developed late in the week. It wasn't expected to be this way when we were looking towards it on Monday. But as it got closer and closer, these two coaches started preparing for this being a game where you'd have to deal with the elements. And it's been App State that in their home stadium has been more successful in doing so. Marcus Williams Jr. in the end zone. And App State adds on to their lead. Mountaineers just continue to pour it on here in the second half, this offensive line, usually the time where they start to take over, but they've been doing it all afternoon long. 
This is just a continuation untouched into the painted area. It's Marcus Williams Jr. Take a look at the junior running back there. It's a great job all afternoon long, offensively, defensively, in the third phase of the game, winning the position battle. It's just a, a pristine performance right now by the 24th ranked team the in the touchdown. country. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 34. That is number 34's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. 15 yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Try for point. So now ULM picking up those penalties as this game moves further and further in the direction of Appalachian State. Chandler State in back out for the point after. State and Rock in the white shoe along with the black shoe here today. Chandler white shoe State and getting on the field. But the Mountaineers just continue to play exceptional football here. The play of this offensive line has just been tremendous. Marcus Williams Jr. getting in the act and scoring him six. Mountaineers up big late. The App State dance team dressed just a little bit warmer than they normally are. I've still given the fans here a performance the same way that this App State football team has given the fans a performance here today. A 45-7 lead over the ULM Warhawks. And a bunny shot here from Chandler State and to kick that out of the end zone after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Got to be frustrating for the Warhawks today. Just couldn't get it going offensively after that initial drive and defensively had a hard time stopping this Mountaineer offense all game long. The frustration starting to set in. But if you head coach via tour, got to be preaching to your team. This season is much bigger than this game. We got a lot of football left. But first in the Western Division right now, prime position to try to get into the Sun Belt Championship game. This is out of the palms of the intended target, Zach, John Zach Jackson, excuse me. And you're right, Pierre, this is an East versus West game, so an opportunity to show that you're the best team in the Sun Belt. But for ULM, what really matters is beating all those teams in the West Division. Absolutely, and, and it's wide open at this moment. Again, every team in the conference with at least one loss except for the two on the field right now. And by the looks of things, if they stand up the way that they are now, never can tell with the explosiveness of this Warhawks offense. But the Mountaineers, they can hold on to this lead, will be the only remaining unbeaten team. You're the Warhawks. If you could continue to win all the rest of your games, you control your own destiny. It'll be very intriguing to hear the press conference from head coach Matt Viator of the Warhawks after this contest. Hear what he thought about playing this game today against this App State crowd. Hakeem Davis gave their almost tipped it up in the air to himself and would have ran it in for a pick six. You talk about a playmaker for the Mountaineers, the reigning Sun Belt Conference defensive player of the week. Leads App State with 45 tackles coming in. He had 11 stops last week. And the Mountaineers have a 45-7. See the Warhawks with a punt. And Jared Porter, who's had a nice day, booms it away. Thomas Hennigan smartly deciding that he wasn't going to try to get his hands on that ball as it dies at the 35 yard line. And this time we will take a break. 11 20 remaining here from Boone, the Mountaineers with a commanding lead. A good day to bring the ponchos to the stadium. The App State band, when it wasn't even raining, had those ponchos on. And I'm sure there were a lot of people here at Kid Brewer that were saying, gosh, that App State band is so smart. And now they look really smart because it's continued to rain throughout 
And Jacob Both Huseman's sides. now in Offense, the game for the Mountaineers. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And App State gets a false start before Huseman can get his first snap. Oh, Garrison gets started a little early there. On the left side of that offensive line. You can see Jacob Huseman in the ball game. Started a couple games for the Mountaineers a season ago. Kendrick Clark gets the carry here as he tosses the legs forward for a few yards. So now it's the backup quarterback battle. Huseman, the 6'3", 205-pound junior from Bradenton, Florida. Started last year's contest against Coastal Carolina and won that game. And Mountaineer fans haven't had too many opportunities this year to see Clark, Pierre, so an opportunity to look at another one of the Mountaineer running backs. He takes it off the left side. The ball's loose. He tries to get it back. And somehow, I think that he did so. Wow. Seen a couple of these backup running backs lose the handle of the football. Just not used to carrying it in game time. Action. Nice, solid hit right there defensively. The Warhawks. Keyshawn Johnson, who just comes in and lowers the boom on Clark, forcing the fumble. Clark diving after it as soon as he saw that ball poke loose. Now Huseman fades back in the pocket. He has pressure from his blind side, and he throws over the head of Jalen Virgil, who was the intended target. Good defensive stop right here for the Warhawks. Something to hang your hat on, pull up. In the film room again, this thing is much bigger than this one Saturday. We've got so many games to go. We looked at their upcoming schedule a little while ago. It only gets tougher. You can't let one loss turn into two or three or four. Xavier Sabach with the boom from the left leg. And it is another beauty, but it doesn't stop short of the end zone. And App State's special teams couldn't get down in time to down it. There are two flags on the field, so we'll get another opportunity to hear from referee Marshall Lewis. Some more extracurricular activity there when the play was, was over. See, this is a roughness call right here. Which way will it go? During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 41. Result of the play was a touchback. Half the distance will be assessed from the 20-yard line. Correction, 10 yards will be assessed from the 20-yard line. First down. Or it could be a hold partner on the Mountaineers, giving the Warhawks a little more room to work with here out of their own end zone. Get some work with these second, third-year guys. Get them some experience so that when their name is called, they're able to answer the bell. Huge reps for some of the backups, and the coaches still care so much about what they're seeing on the field when they have some of the backups in the game. During App State's first game against ETSU, what had defensive coordinator Ted Roof riled up the most was how his second and third units played. A great tackle this time, coming up and flipping his man upside down from Tyler Bird, the inside linebacker. Tyler Bird. Sophomore getting into the game again. This is what we talked about getting those second, third year guys some looks. Their name may be called sometime in this season. So you got to get them on film, get them some confidence here. Tyler Bird making the most of his opportunity. Colby Suits has some pressure. He evades it. Now he's off the right side trying to use his legs. And four Mountaineers come up and bring him down. Nice job by Suits there. Feeling the pressure, evading it, stepping up in the pocket, getting some positive yards. Like what I've seen out of Kobe Suits today, aside from the interception, which was just a tremendous play by Jordan Fear, this young man has been able to come in and have some success. Just a redshirt freshman for the Warhawks. Evans is a senior. So every rep that they can get Kobe Suits Gives fans a look at what the future might be. He fakes, now he runs, and App State is all over that as Tyler Bird was the first one to him. 
And then he has some teammates come up and stop the forward progress. So it's going to be fourth down here for the Warhawks. If you're Ted Roof, you got to love what you've seen from your defensive unit all afternoon long. Been able to hold this vaunted ULM offense to just seven points, very minimum yards. And it's no drop off when you bring your second and third string players on the field. Got to be happy with the way your team is playing thus far. So Jared Porter, not quite as deep as he was earlier in this game, but still pretty deep in his own territory, booms this away, and Thomas Hennigan with the fair catch for the Mountaineers. Taking a look at some of the other scores in the Sun Belt Conference. Right now, Georgia Southern and Coastal Carolina are heading to the third overtime. It's 24-17 Coastal Carolina, 24-17 Georgia Southern right now. And actually waiting for the update. That game might have just ended after the end of the second overtime. Troy getting the win over South Alabama, 37-13 back on Thursday. And Louisiana Lafayette winning 37-20 over Arkansas State in another midweek game. Later on tonight, Georgia State and Army will battle against each other. A lot of football left in this one, too, partner. Again, a lot of guys on the field who work hard on a daily basis, give their all for their respective teams. We'd love to see them get that opportunity here today in game action. Taking closer to seven minutes remaining in this contest as it's almost all backups in the game right now for the Mountaineers. And a great catch by Jalen Virgil, and Jalen Virgil's off to the races. He puts on the burners, and he finds himself in the end zone once again. A lot of backups in the game, Jalen Virgil not being one of them. That there's a starting receiver, and he has world-class sprinter speed. Second in the Sun Belt Conference in the 100 meter race and he shows you why right there if you miss a tackle in man-to-man -man coverage he has the ability to take it the distance as he displays there and Jacob Huseman with a touchdown for the Mountaineers that's his fourth career and his second here of the season Staten's extra point is up and good, and the Mountaineers, 24th in the country, have put up 52 points on the ULM Warhawks. The offense just keeps showing more and more wrinkles. You see a look there of the ULM Warhawks, a whole host of them that are along the bench and believe that ULM has some heaters over on the other side of the field, know that the Mountaineers do. And Pierre, are those heaters really effective or when you have weather like this and you're not used to it, do you just wish you could be right up against it? But unfortunately, you've got so many other guys around you. Well, the weather was definitely a factor today for the Warhawks. You saw some very uncharacteristic things from them, some drop passes from open receivers. Caleb Evans not able Receiving to hit team open for receivers. And a fair catch. Always and placed at the 25 that the yard line. Weather and the rain played a factor. Had to. This is a very explosive ULM offense coming to this one. But today, just 211 yards of total offense. They average over 200 on the ground, just a buck 07 right now. Mountaineers conversely. 552 yards, very balanced, 270 through the air, 282 on the ground. Well, App State misses the tackle at the line of scrimmage, and now on the end around, it will be made as coming up and eventually getting his man down was Milan Tucker, freshman defensive back from Lehigh Acres, Florida. Mountaineer team, just so much speed, even from the second, third year guys, you see, the receiver there held up just enough in the backfield to give this team time to show off their team speed. Milan Tucker finishes the job behind the line. 
Suits fakes the handoff. Now he goes through the middle and off the fingertips of Tyler Bird, who has been an absolute animal since coming in this game for the Mountaineers. He's been everywhere making so many big plays, and he almost had an interception there. Suits just stares down his receiver, which allows Tyler Bird time in that zone to flow with the eyes of the quarterback and almost come up with a big time catch there. Tyler Bird, a sophomore, Jordan Fair, a senior. So App State fans possibly getting a look at one of the guys that's going to be a key defensive player in the future. What important reps these are right here as Suits has his man and the ball is dropped as it was right at the sticks and probably would have been a first down. But Cameron Darling, the tight end, wasn't able to hold on. Nice job right there. Caleb Dawson getting that arm in there to strip the the ball away from the receiver Caleb Dawson there coming up big for the Mountaineers another three and out for this defense this second and third unit who shows that it's time for their number to be called they can show up that is huge for a team in this situation the team that's looking for championship aspirations you got to build that depth and that depth is on full display here in this contest as the ball just dies at the 42-yard line. ULM will down it there, and that's where the App State offense will take over. Fresh off Jacob Huseman completing the long pass of 55 yards to Jalen Virgil for the touchdown. Jacob Huseman comes in and throws a strike. The play action again, very aggressive. ULM defense, the linebackers will flow with the look of run. He just throws it right behind him to Jalen Virgil, who turns on the Jets. The handoff here to Clark, and Clark faces resistance at about three yards past the line of scrimmage. Kendrick Clark, a young man who just works so hard each and every day. Says he just worked hard just to be here, just to be on this team. Take a look at the rush yards today for both teams. Mountaineers get dangerously close to that 300 yard mark. The sign that your offensive line has done their job. And now it's pretty much backup offensive linemen and a lot of young guys out there, but they are still just having incredible holes for this App State running game as Clark with the rush there. And it's a third and one, ever so close to the first down. Seeing the Kendrick Clark not contacted until he's six, seven yards down the field. This offensive line just continues to grind it out. They come off the ball low, they fire off, and they don't let up until the whistle blows. Clark pushes forward with the offensive line just bulldozing over the defensive line of ULM. And it's another App State first down. And Pierre, as I look down on the field, there's a lot of different numbers that some Mountaineer fans aren't used to seeing out there. But it looks like the first string, and that's all you can ask for if you're a head coach, Aliyah Drinkwitz. Absolutely. And again, the, building that depth is so important. It is a long college football season. A lot of nicks happen. A lot of unfortunate injuries happen. So you need to be able to know that you can go to your second, your third string when needed. That's what separates the good teams from the great teams. Everybody's good in the first in the first 11, rather, on your roster. But can you get down to that second, third string and still be just as effective? Handoff here, and it's the first rush of the day for Gabe Montgomery, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Montgomery with some positive yardage. As now that is the sixth running back in the game for App State. Nice run right there by Montgomery. Impatient to the hole and then the power. The surge forward for a couple yards. If you're Eli Drinkers, you just want to run this clock down all the way in the, the game with the ball in your hands. And get out of here with minimal injury and a big time conference win. Huseman struggles with the snap. Now he gets it back as he dives on top of it. He struggled to get it from his hands into the hands of Montgomery. 
Then the ball came loose, but he was Johnny on the spot, diving on top of it. And he keeps possession with the Mountaineers as now they have third and seven. See it right there. Snap, not bad, controls it, but got to make a decision as a quarterback. Am I going to pull the ball? Am I going to leave the ball in the belly of the running back? There's some indecisiveness. Elements may be playing a part there as well. If you're a Mountaineer supporter, you'd love to see he's able to get back on that football. So let's see what App State does here on third and seven. If they'll try to throw for this first down or keep it on the ground. Virgil comes in motion. The handoff goes to Montgomery and he rushes ahead, but is short of the first down. So the Mountaineers trying to figure out what to do here, whether or not they want to go for it or not. And there is a injured Warhawk as that is Brandon Nettles, the defensive end. And will be helped off with the help of the athletic training staff. Love to see him get up and walk to the sideline, hoping he's okay. Your head coach, Eli Drinkwitz, you would love to see your team in this football game with the ball in their hands and get a first down here. It goes a long way in just effectively ending this ball game with now approaching a minute and a half left. They still have 23 seconds left on the shot clock and they're gonna let it tick all the way down before they try to get the ball to be a first down here on fourth and two. And ULM pointing that App State had a false start. Let's hear what Marshall Lewis has to say. Like some movement up front by the Mountaineers. Set them back five yards and force the punting unit to take the field. Full start, offense number 74. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. Clock will start on my signal. So App State with the punt here as Sabach with an absolute beauty. They down it at the one yard line as coming up and making that play for the Mountaineers. And a great one in coverage is Mike Price, the defensive back. So now App State will go on defense here against the Warhawks with a minute left in this game. And Colby Suits. You're going to start from the one yard line. It's been a big time performance all evening and afternoon long for the Mountaineers. Offensively, 572 yards, holding ULM to just 209 and seven points. They love to end this thing the right way. A big time conference win and move on to next week. A handoff here. They do get some space as darting ahead for a couple is Ja'Kyle Holmes. We talked about this earlier, but if you're ULM, you got so much to play for. You're, you're first in the division right now. You got several very difficult games coming up. You cannot let this loss, no matter how much it's by one or over 40 as it is right now, demoralize you to the point to where this turns into two and three losses. Be a heck of a job by Coach Viator to get his team back rallied and ready for next week. A nice tackle that time from the ankles is coming up and making it as Brendan Harrington, the outside linebacker. And it looks like that's gonna be the end of this one. So next week, ULM will head back home and take on Georgia State. That'll be a four o'clock central time kickoff for Appalachian State, ranked 24th in the country coming into this one. They get the 52-7 victory over the leader in the West Division. They're the only remaining Sun Belt unbeaten, and the App State Mountaineers will head to take on South Alabama next Saturday. What a performance, Pierre. It's a tremendous job in all three phases of the game. We talked about holding 
this ULM team well under their average in yards and points and then offensively exploding with over 500 yards, 52 points, field position battle in check all afternoon long. The Mountaineers, 24th in the country with that win, bowl eligible on the season. But if you're ULM, lots to play for in this season. Can't let this loss affect you and linger later on in the year. A special thanks to Alex Burdine and Nicole Shear for all their great work today as our producer and director. So for Pierre Banks, I'm Harrison Battle saying so long from Kid Brewer Stadium where the final score is 52-7 App State. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN.com or download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.